So first of all, we'll talk about <coughs> symbology. And, and I, as I just said earlier, I'm not an expert on symbology. We are discussing symbology in the context of what do we know about symbology? How deep are our thoughts about symbology? What, what, is, what is it that we still need to be thinking about to be contemplating? And here I've got three different symbols. The first symbol is Maharaja Ranjit Singh uh, statue on Lahore, in Lahore. You see, this statue is, has been erected in Lahore. And uh, the reason for me this symbology is important is like uh, Ranjit, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Singh and Gaur, uh, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, bestowed those titles upon his followers. And, and when I hear of leaders with the surname Singh, I naturally feel a sense of affinity with them, a sense of kinship. And then, we have, then we have the symbol in the middle, like Ekongar, and that symbol is the symbol of oneness, about being interconnected with all of life. Not so it, it goes beyond kinship. It goes beyond those that we naturally feel um, a kind of relatedness with. It goes. It encompasses also those that we don't feel that connection with, because it reminds us that every all life is interconnected. And then yeah. the third symbol of Bandishore, where Guru Harakwind. Um, gee, he he negotiated the release from prison of 52 Hindu Rajas. He, it, they were not Sikh Rajas, they were Hindu Rajas, and nevertheless, it, he embraced them. So it symbolizes humanitarianism, so not simply kinship. It's, it, that embrace goes much further than kinship. It's about humanity, it's about being unconditional in terms of who we try to support. So if we look at these three three symbols, all denoting different aspects of our relationship with others, there is this kind of, um, uh, your surname is Singh, same as my brother's surname, same as my father's surname. And so uh, I feel a sense of connectedness with you, a, kin a kind of kinship. And then at the same time, in when we're in our professional lives, in roles of leadership, we have to look much further than those that we feel the natural instinctual affinity with. We have to feel that same sense of kinship with everyone. So for you in your professional life, um, in terms of this contrast between kinship and oneship, how have you navigated that? And how have the, how has the Sikhs, how have the Sikh symbols enabled you to embrace the other and also you know strengthen your relationship with those who are similar to to us in terms of values i'll be honest with you uh, i grew up in delhi india and i don't think maybe one or two uh go six they they were my friends they are still my friends from school from college and uh most of them uh, happen to be Hindus. One or two, two guys are uh, Muslims. So I, uh, until my, you know, uh, teenage or maybe even further, I really uh, did not find anything special. I'm telling honest facts. Mm -hmm. Yep. I did not have any specific, you know, uh, bent towards the six symbols. I was rather a rebel. My father used to, uh, you know, push me to go to Gurudwara, then Yavar Karolba Gurudwara, then Bangla Sahib Gurudwara. I used to go there. It was more of a, a ritual going to a Gurudwara than, you know, uh, going there to have a sense of relationship, a sense of belonging or anything else. When I was even younger, the, the, the bigger attraction was Kada Prashad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and and I, I don't think so. I'm alone in this, uh, you know, thing. Most of the people, most of Sikhs, uh, they are, they, they, they start off like that. Unless uh, my, my family was a, a very deeply rooted into Sikhi and it was a spiritual family. My father 
was you know uh, he used to do asa divar in in gurudwara karol bag and every every morning i mean he was so pure in uh, you know uh, uttering the the part itself that if he if he wasn't present in the gurudwara he was not a ragi or he was not a kirtaniya but when they would come to do kirtan in the morning they would my and if someone is, one there are three guys who do the kirtan if one is missing invariably my father would get a call early morning 4:35 o'clock to please come because uh, it's difficult remembering the entire asa divar that goes on for about half one half hours but my father uh, uh, knew it and he, and he would utter it uh, in one single stroke so i mean my total my my paternal family my maternal family, both families are they, they are deeply rooted into sikhi and yet and yet i could not understand this fact and i could not understand the depth of sikhi until my father died so my, the death of my father was particularly i mean i that was the most painful experience for me and i till date i i feel like i did not uh, learn enough from him i mean he wasn't a professor he wasn't a highly educated man he would tell things you know in in uh, practical sense or he would he would utter some you know good morning shlokas to to uh, highlight something or to emphasize something but uh, there remained a gap between me and my dad and that gap i realized only after he passed away and his passing away actually brought me into sikhi and gradually i started feeling the void and i he would he used to do part every morning asa divar every evening rasa and in sometimes in between whatever and often he would do japji sahib so after he passed away i i started missing uh, you know missing out on those his voice his his voice would echo in my ears and it it still does it still does and <clears throat> so uh that led me on to sikhi and then i started relating with things like nishan sahib like ek omkar in particular like khanda sahib so these uh, symbols of sikhi uh they i started noticing them i think after i passed my uh, 30 years of age and then you know that is a time when you are most busy in your business affairs in your family life and you know you have children you have your you are driven on to the arthan journey basically i would say so all of that and everyone goes through that so for the next 10 15 years i was completely engrossed into that but since then i was driven on to sikhi and uh, then i had uh, a, a Uh, an unfortunate chapter in my life and i felt sick and i had multiple complications in my body and then then i think vai guru uh, called uh, my attention to him dukdaru sukhrupya dukdaru sukhrupya ja sukdana hoy that's right that that thing i took over and it's about now 10 years since i am completely devoted to sikhi and i am i am writing a book a uh, contemporary description of guru granth sahib so uh, because i i i i i see there is nothing of that sort available which our future generations can can read and actually relate to and understand the meaning because gurmukhi uh, is our language uh, punjabi we speak as time is passing punjabi is not going any further gurmukhi is disappearing gradually And let me to... ask you about that actually because that's uh, another symbology uh, let me ask you about gurumukhi in a minute so um you see um guru nanak dev ji and guru angad dev ji they they formalized the gurumukhi script um they gave us these um these characters uh to to provide a script for the gurbani and yeah. in terms of leadership this was great innovation because the gurmukhi it didn't exist beforehand and yeah. people needed it people and it empowered people more and more people became literate even without going to school my yeah. father learned the gurmukhi 
of his own accord without going to school. And he was literate. He was able to read newspapers and, and novels, you know, being self-taught. So it was a language that enabled people to easily become literate. And uh, the Nishan Sab that you've spoken about, you know, through our Sikhi struggles, we, you know, our ancestors, you know, your ancestors, my ancestors, they have fought so many battles. And when we open up Gurdwaras and we are able to raise the Nishan Sahib, there's a sense of ownership that we can claim the right to, to our own rituals and values within this yes, certainly. space. Yeah? Certainly. And then the Kanda, as you mentioned earlier on, the Kanda is a reminder of like truth and justice and 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 combining, balancing the spiritual with the temporal life, the worldly life and the spiritual life and, and being active in terms of our pursuits of, of justice. So these three symbols, there's innovation, there's ownership, there's activism in every in every leadership endeavor. So for you in your life, like when you know having recognized the importance of Gurmukhi, for example, and recognized, uh, you know, after like when you, you became aware of these symbols, how do these symbols enable you to focus your leadership, you know, the, you know, the writings that you're doing, the, the purpose that you see for your life, how do these symbols guide you? Uh, <clears throat> see, as uh, if I talk about the very first symbol, uh, for example, the Nishan Sahib. Nishan Sahib uh, reminds and it it takes you, I mean, the moment you see a Nishan Sahib, you are assured that there's a nearby Gurdwara. You can go there. In case, if you are in any trouble, you will get help from there. If you have any kind of crisis, you, you are certainly going heading to a safe place and will get the necessary help. Moreover, if you if you go to a Gurdwara, I mean, this is reminiscent of Gurdwara. Immediately, you are, you are you have a kind of, you know, safety in your head that I am near to a safe place. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Where I can get food, where I can get shelter, where I can, if, if I'm in trouble. And apart more, more than that, in normal life, when you see Nishan Sahib, it gives you a sense of belonging, not only uh, to your community, but also to Almighty. It's, it gives a sense, it, this is symbolic of, it is an instant, you know, uh, remembrance of your connectedness with other. So to me, Nishan Sahib is a symbol of connection and relatability. And when you talk about focusing on the Guru Granth Sahib Ji and you talked about Gurmukhi, these are innovations. You're talking about what we don't currently have and your endeavor is to create something that doesn't already exist to fill in that gap, that's innovation. And with, together with innovation, there's a sense of ownership. What is it that you want to, what's the outcome that you're looking for in terms of that innovation? What will it do? Like, you know, we said earlier that Gurmukhi empowered people to become literate for one thing, much more than that, but at least in the very least, they were able to read and write. And through that reading and writing, people are then enabled to do more, much more than that. Um, how I see Sikhi is as life itself, you know. Guru Granth Sahib uh, is, an, is an ocean of, you know, knowledge and wisdom. And I see Sikhi in its entirety as life itself. And Guru Granth Sahib is a life guide. It is not a dictate like, for example, there are 10 commandments in Christianity. I respect them. They're all good. I don't say they are not good or they're bad. But commandments, it, it's a kind of, if you do this, you are good to go. If you don't do this, then you're punished. You understand? Likewise, in uh, Islam, for example, everything is good. Islam talks about Elif, which is our Ekonkar, similar to that. You know, symbolically, they are they represent the same. Elif was the first thing when Guru Nanak went to school and when the teacher showed him, taught him about the Elif, Guru Nanak said it is the one at, at the age of seven years or something. 
when he related one oneness of the universe with elif that was the first uh, enlightenment that was the first, very first, one of the very few first initial incidents that that caught his teacher's eyes so that elif is symbolic of the oneness now but if you go to islam in the practical sense there are again rewards and punishments it's it's kind of dictate if you do this you are you will be given you know all kinds of uh, good things in in paradise if you don't do this you will be uh, given to the you will burn in the fire of hell like things like that on the contrary which is the uniqueness of guru granth sahib it is a life guide it is not a dictate it it takes you you start reading it you start you it doesn't say you do this or don't do this it tells this is right and this is wrong and you have been blessed with a wonderful mind you should reflect on it read whatever is written and then the choice of your decision lies with you it doesn't compel you to do something necessarily so that's a major difference i've read many scriptures this is one major difference which i find uh, bit, uh, uh, with guru granth sahib from other uh, scriptures so that is one point and <clears throat> like uh, i'm sorry i just got lost into this not to worry not to worry let yeah. me go on to the next set of symbols then um so let's let's focus okay, on okay i was i was telling about sing the, the the symbol which inspires me the most is ekonkar it is one symbol which contains everything about life it contains everything that exists it contains the entire universe into this one symbol so if you want to uh, you know adapt to it you need to read more of guru granth sahib you get you get you must delve into the depths of the those, those subtle wisdoms that that are given in within the scripture well, i suppose in terms of leadership that oneness it's about you know being unconditional not having favorites in the workplace not kind of favoring some above others being being fair to all and encouraging diversity because within that oneness there are you know five fingers are not the same <laughs> you know we we hear that a lot don't we so it does in terms of our professional lives it leads it has very many practical applications. what i'm trying to say is what i'm trying to say is see you you're talking about uh, <clears throat> symbolism for leadership yeah yep so all these symbols that we have in sikhi that inspire us all and we we establish a sense of connection and a sense of inspiration we draw from it yeah now forgive me forgive me for for this thing if we take out sikhi for a moment hypothetically and put christianity into this what difference do you think it would make well the thing is you see with christianity uh, you know the, the reason i'm doing this project is because most of the leadership literature is based on christian values of um and western Euro european values and so what we're doing here that is different is simply using different examples there might not be very many uh, differences per se because in christianity there is values based leadership there's ethical leadership all we're doing is simply using different examples we're just using different metaphors and, and I, I i that's why i told you at the very beginning that i appreciate what you're doing but i i actually i'm looking for something substantial that actually puts you know sikhi is has been is not sikhi is very vast i want someone like you someone like you who is actually uh, it's the right place to you know sikhi is very vast sikhi needs a very vast vision i don't want to put sikhi symbolism versus islamic symbolism yeah. versus western christianism or western uh, symbolism versus japanese symbol, uh, symbolism versus chinese symbol every religion every faith has got symbols and those symbols empower their people yeah we, we we can go deeper and deeper so 
so we start at the surface and then <laughs> you see I'm a teacher by background and so with teach you know being a teacher it's like we have to take we can't jump to the the you know to the deepest level without having swum you know the the smaller kind of in the shallower water so at the moment we're just kind of like seeing you know like how it feels, how the water feels in the at the shallow end until we're ready to dive into the deep end. So I just have three more symbols to talk about and then we yeah, can... Well, I'm, I'm free to talk. I mean, I, I'll, okay. I'll try yeah, to just... uh, speak my mind. Um... Yeah. Let's, let's just talk about these last three symbols now. And um, so here we have the symbology of the Langar Seva. Yeah. Symbolically, this is where we all are equals and we sit on the floor together regardless of our rank regardless of our riches regardless of our status and we eat together with others as equal human Absolutely. beings Absolutely. and then we have the in the middle we have guru gobind singh ji uh, on a horse and as we know that during those times for people of a lower uh, rank in life like the lower caste they were not allowed to ride horses they had to they would be punished for riding horses but he allowed he, all of his followers to to ride you know they they went to battle together and there was no kind of like um so this act of riding a horse was this act was an act of defiance it kind of disrupted the social order and in the third image we've got my bagel who led the 40 um the followers who had defected from the army she led them back into battle and so it was not you know women were not traditionally allowed to ride you know it wasn't normal for for women to be leading men into battle but she did it so these all three symbolically they they um they depict a transformation of social order where sikhi teaches us that we can break these hierarchies of like high you know high caste low caste um races which are considered to be superior and races which are considered to be inferior and that still goes on you know we're uh, you've lived in delhi and i've lived in london i live in birmingham we, we live in diverse cities and we know that uh, even in the west where we don't have a caste system as such but we still have like a pecking order of which Races are considered to be more superior than other races, and that yeah, certainly, not... certainly, it is just. I mean, even if, if you take slavery, even that was kind of uh, uh, you know uh, high and low. Mm. Yes, it was. Even the Nazis, when they did what what Hitler did to 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 the you know, even that was kind of slavery. I would I would uh, in that uh, kind of discrimination. Yeah, uh, so, so racism. Yeah, so racism. The casteism in itself, mm. when he, he when he. Uh, you know, killed millions of Jews. Is that not a lower and high ranking? Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, I mean, uh, I would put all of these slavery and you know, uh, Hitler's uh, killing of millions of Jews. Uh, all of these are you know, um, kind of higher social status and the lower social status. Mm -hmm. And of course, what exists in India, the caste system and the Vern system, that is. Uh, probably a worst among all because it, it, it's ongoing since millenniums and it still exists so that is on a on a different level altogether but all these incidents are basically uh, uh, social hierarchy uh, you know factors yes yeah, superiority of you yeah. know a particular race at the expense of others but Sikhi breaks that down so here we have a contrast between on one hand it's like we're all we're we're taught to be equal egalitarian and at the same time we we're not um we're encouraged to to be ambitious to break through those ranks and, and that we don't need to stay in our station as it were we don't kind of like need to be limited by what the social order tells us like well you know women can't ride or you know you can't ride if unless you're from the ruling class and yeah. so we have both we we have like the the humility to sit on the floor and eat together the humility to do that and to be equal with everyone and also the 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 courage to break through those barriers and and rise above our, our station and be to be ambitious and to like the falcon in guru Gobind singh ji's um image the the falcon represents freedom and vision and and not kind of overcoming the oppression i suppose in some way so so for you, in terms of Sikhi, how is it that we are using our Sikh 
symbology or principles in order to both break through and at the same time remain humble down to down to earth yeah, i see sikhi as the, if i if i uh, if you look at the origin of sikhi where did sikhi come from sikhi came from basically uh, by renouncing the hindu rituals Guru Angad Dev Ji, before he became Guru, said the second Guru, Bhai Lena, he, he, was a, uh, he was a Hindu spiritual teacher and he was a uh, teacher in a Hindu school as well. The Hindu uh, temple and the school, as far as I have read, they were uh, together and he was a head priest of the temple and also he was a head teacher of the school. And he used to, and he was a, you know, a devotee of uh, Mata Durga. And his transformation, because he was teaching to his pupils, his students every day about Hinduism, about the various uh, uh, Hindu texts and about the various Hindu rituals and about all that the, Hindu, that the Sanatan Dharam Hinduism uh, carries on its head. And he, he was teaching that to his students and uh, in the school. And when he was in the temple, he, he would be doing all those rituals by himself. So, but he wasn't satisfied. He was, he, he, he was not contented. He, uh, once it, it happened so that he heard, he used to go uh, to the village pond for, for bathing early morning. And once he heard someone singing, uh, you know, uh, Gurbani, um, hymns and he went there and he was he, he got pulled to that voice when he went there he saw Bhai Joda Ji there he was bathing in the pond and then he took lead from him who was who, whose uh, words are these and then he uh, directed pointed into Guru Nanak Dev Ji then he went to Kartarpur Ji and then when, when, then he stayed with Guru, Guru Nanak Dev Ji then he, he became his disciple and then he Guru, uh, Guru Nanak Dev Ji saw potential in him and then the missing thing that he couldn't find from Hinduism and from singing the praises of Goddess Durga, that he found in Guru Nanak Dev Ji's, you know, uh, pure words. And uh, he was hooked there. He couldn't come back. And then he decided he will stay. And then he told his uh, uh, his intention to Guru Sahib. And then looking at his, uh, you know, abilities and his commitment and his uh, le learned uh, view. And looking at his overall you know uh, persona guru nanak dev ji and and staying in guru nanak dev ji's company he was transformed and then guru nanak dev ji uh, embraced him and made him guru angad dev angad is when i take you into my lap and i embrace you now you are my part angad means ang my ang so guru nanak dev ji made pai lena his own ang and gave him the name angad dev so, what I'm, what I'm saying is that Guru Granth Sahib starts from Piri. It starts from Piri. Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Guru Angad Dev Ji, Guru Amar Das Ji, Guru Ram Das Ji and Guru Arjan Dev Ji. They were all Piris. From the sixth Guru, Guru Har Gobind Ji, the Miri Piri concept started. If you look at the flow of Sikh Gurus, it, it starts from Piri, then it goes into Miri and, and you come to a 10th Guru who was a warrior and a master. Circumstances was spiritual yeah. and warrior, both. That's right, yeah, because circumstances were very different, weren't they? For yeah. um, in the time of the 6th Guru, you know, the his father had been martyred yeah. And um, and also with Guru Gobind Singh Ji, his father was also martyred. So, you know, that those were the realities in which they, I suppose, in a way, they they were pushed into be, becoming warriors. The circumstances. Yeah, when, I, when I read Guru Gobind Sahib, the only thing I, the, the one word that, that comes to my mind when I read Guru Gobind Sahib is change is the eternal truth. Change is the eternal truth. One who can adapt to the change, to the ongoing change, is the man 
he will be absorbed into the divine so that is the essence of guru gan sahib and and our entire sikh you know uh, wisdom now adapting to that uh, means coming under hukum and that coming under hukum is the most difficult task because we are led by our minds and we we have actually uh, in in a way we have forgotten what we have not read enough and we have not propagated enough what is written in guru gan sahib we are all now heading into the same those uh, political and you know uh, business nexuses and we are the the value of guru gan sahib is diminishing gradually and we all have a responsibility to to bring that up to restore that and to take it to the to the place uh, what it deserves where it well, deserves to be yeah i agree with so, you so and i was telling about from guru nanak if you see from guru nanak to guru gobind singh ji right guru gobind singh ji is a man who compiled guru gan sahib and who put it into मास्टरशिप एंड ही सेज सब सिखन को हुक्म है गुरु मान्यो ग्रंथ एंड आर यू सरप्राइज डोंट फील सरप्राइज दट गुरु गोबिंद सिंह जी वॉज सच ए मास्टर सच ए सच ए वेल रेड मैन सच ए वाइज मैन सच स्पिरिचुअल मैन एंड ही हैज नॉट इंक्लूडेड वन वर्ड ऑफ हिज ओन इन गुरु ग्रंथ साहिब हाउ स्ट्रेंज इज दैट एंड हाउ वॉन्डरफुल इज दैट वाई do we question that thing why did he you know he has written a separate granth dasham granth which is as big as guru granth sahib but he has not included even one him even one verse of that uh, entire book into guru granth sahib when he is compiling it and he has every right to be to include that and he has not included any vani any guru from the sixth guru unto the tenth guru except for guru guru teg bahadur sahib ji and whatever because he was a uh, he was a spiritual highly spiritual man and what he nova mahalla jo likha unhone what the, the, that ninth mahalla that is purely piri part so this change from guru nanak to guru gobind singh ji and then ultimately culminating into guru granth sahib it tells us a lot of it tells us a lot you know it is basically this is a value that we are losing on so symbols if you go by sim- symbols i strongly feel that the only symbol the biggest symbol not only the, the biggest symbol in sikhi is a ikonkar and in practice when we look at ikonkar in practice then we see behaviors such as the langar then we see the behaviors such as uh, bandishor where we uh, help and support everyone regardless of whether we they're part of our family or whether they are part of the enemy even so that it it kind of uh, so conjures sikhi, sikhi travels from guru rather than you know, traveling from guru nanak dev to guru gobind singh ji sikhi travels from guru gobind singh ji to guru nanak dev it 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 uh, starts from guru granth uh, guru gobind singh ji because that is the earthen life that we live that's a temporal life that we live and he was forced into that and we are we are in that very stage in in the uh, in the family life in in the social life so all the social values all ethics and everything from langar to you know uh, uh, to to benevolence to to be uh, humility it it starts from guru gobind it go it, lead, it should lead up to guru nanak dev it should start from meri it should go up to piri that's a cycle of sikhi that as as i see it and as far as you know and when you talk about leadership through symbolism or leadership by any means symbols are great because symbols symbols inspire you symbol inspire you and every symbol for example if you see khanda you immediately are reminded of purity and commitment and honesty and truthful living so that one symbol is it inspires in so many ways so symbols are very very important but what i'm saying is symbols uh, we we follow those symbols we live by them we and we should we do not and that's to the fact but we should do that and ultimately we should be heading towards a ultimate symbol ikonkar leadership and your authority of leadership will come by spirituality not by the earthen power not by rule 
रूल इज टू डिफेंड स्ट्रेंथ इज टू डिफेंड करेज इज टू डिफेंड दो योर सेल्फ एंड दो आर वीकर इट इज इट इज इट इज टू एम्पावर ऑन द ऑन द यू नो फिजिकल लेवल सो दैट इज इसेंशियल दैट अ स्टार्टिंग पॉइंट बट वेयर यू आर यू शुड बी हेडिंग is your spiritual power once you are empowered spiritually you are empowered in totality okay well, okay great brilliant well thank you very much manjeet singh ji i've really appreciated your time this evening and um i look forward to continuing the conversation with you and as i say we have to take small steps until we feel confident I, enough to to dive in I, I am grateful to you for for uh, uh, inviting me and to have discussion with me and uh, I, i understand because i i have been meeting so many people and i have been discussing with so many you know different different you know uh, people from from uh, various parts of amritsar from various granthis head granthis of in punjab uh, you know and what i feel is that the, the need of the hour is to 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 a uh, set a learning for those for example the head granthis and the granthis in in various gurudwaras those who are who have read guru granth sahib and who are today fighting struggling to make their two ends meet because of the political corruption and because of so many other various reasons we need to have uh, our symbols and our strengths and our commitment to bring to front those people they are the real warriors if they if you want to save sikhi if you want sikhi to prosper if you want sikhi to travel to the entire world and if you want sikhi to achieve its, its purpose we need to bring those people those granthis those those people who are struggling in villages in gurdwaras and those who are victims of the you know politics at every stage so i really want uh, that change to happen Okay. Well, let's see where Mohi Guru leads us. So everything is in the hands, in the will of. Of course, um, of course. Okay. okay. Mohi Guru Ji ka khalsa, Mohi Guru Ji ki fatih. Mohi Guru Ji ka khalsa, Mohi Guru Ji ki fatih.